Hello everyone, I'm Simone Stanley welcoming you guys back to another segment of the HBCU NFL Report where we provide you guys an update on some of your favorite black college football stars in the pros. Today we're going to talk about Franklin Mack McCain III and we're going to look at his outlook with the Denver Broncos. We're going to one, talk about the competition that he'll have heading into training camp and two, I'm going to tell you guys a couple of reasons why Mack could be a favorite for the 53-man roster that will come out at the end of August. So let's get right into it. So the three-time All-MEAC defensive back Franklin Mack McCain III aka Mack aka the Mack attack say that three times fast right now for the American, American, American. Mac okay Mac signed an undrafted free agent deal with the Denver Broncos after the 2021 NFL draft that happened all the way back in April so April is the draft and July is the time where you see if you're gonna really make the final roster because training camp y'all sounds fun like camp it's fun but training camp is really like the hunger games of the nfl because they bring in about 80 guys and they're all coming in fighting for 53 spots and it's not just the undrafted free agent guys it don't matter if you were an undrafted free agent it don't matter if you were drafted in the fourth fifth sixth round it don't matter if we signed you in free agency training camp is the time where everybody gets evaluated and nobody's spot is safe so we're going to talk a little bit about max competition heading into training camp now the denver broncos secondary was a hot mess last season they were one of the worst secondaries in the league and that's not just because the guys were bad it really was due to injuries they had a lot of injuries in their secondary and they were pulling them like third string fourth string practice squad guys having a start at outside corner so that's why the broncos put such an emphasis on their secondary this season and that's why i think matt will have an out a good positive outlook with the broncos so the broncos started their offseason by signing cal fuller and ronald darby during free agency cal and ronald darby are two all pro one Super Bowl winning veteran cornerbacks that will be starting for the Broncos next season. Those two guys are a sure lock for the Broncos roster. The Broncos will keep about seven cornerbacks on their roster and Kyle and Ronald will definitely take up two of those spots. So that leaves us with five spots left. Okay. So moving on, Bryce Callahan. Bryce Callahan was one of the most productive corners for the Broncos last season, and he will definitely be coming back to take a roster spot. So shoo, that's four spots left. Now, with those four spots left, let's get to the draft. The Broncos drafted Patrick Sertain Jr., Patrick Sertain II, a lockdown corner out of Alabama with their number nine overall pick in the first round, and he will be a lock for the roster. Shoo, that's three guys left. There's three roster spots left at the cornerback position. Now when we get there, that's when we get kind of funky. And that's where we're going to look at Mac's outlook. And I think Mac has a good outlook to make one of those three spots. And let me tell you why. Let's get into the stats. Let's get into his numbers. Matt McKay had 113 tackles, 8 interceptions, 22 pass breakups, and 30 deflections in 20 games. But his most impressive stat to me was his 374 career return yards that resulted in four touchdowns. 374 career return yards. Do y'all realize, do y'all realize the impact of that number? There are guys that are wide receivers in the league that will be lucky to have 374 yards a season. And this guy is in the secondary. This guy is a cornerback doing the work for the offense. You can't deny those numbers. You really, you really, you really can't deny those numbers. <laughs> and the Broncos are not denying those numbers because the Broncos signed Matt to, to the second highest signing bonus out of all the undrafted free agents. Now, the Broncos brought in 11 undrafted free agents and Matt McCain earned the second highest signing bonus. And that was the highest signing bonus out of all the defensive positions of the undrafted free agents. And money talks, especially in the league. Now, money talks everywhere, but money especially talks in these professional leagues. And they're already investing more in Mac than they're investing in their other undrafted free agents. So that's already a huge sign for Mac. And the second huge sign for me. This might not mean nothing to y'all, but one of the other huge signs is they already got some documentaries out on Mac 
talking about his civil rights history with his granddad in the sit-in movement, the Greensboro Four sit-in movement. The Broncos have already brought out the production crew on Mac. They're already doing feature stories on him. So you're getting your fans, Broncos fans are already reading and falling in love with Mac's history. Oh wow, he comes from a rich history of civil rights leaders. You don't just give your fans that rich history of Mac just to cut him from the roster. So that's a huge sign from him as well. But also one of the biggest signs for me is that Mac was an outside corner with the Aggies. He was a shutdown, obviously, outside corner um, for a and And coming into the league, a lot of scouts are predicting that Mac will be in the slot, that he will be a slot corner in the NFL. And that's, for some people, that's a negative, but it's really not a negative. It's just technical. And now the league is moving to the slot corner heavy league. They're, Pretty much every team has packages with slot corners and packages with slot um, receivers. And if Mac can specialize at the slot position, that will be really good for him because there's a lot of players on this team, Ronald Darby, Cal Fuller, they're outside corners. Patrick Sertain is coming in to be an outside corner. Bryce Callahan is a guy that can play outside and the inside in the slot. But if Mac comes in and specializes as a slot corner, then he's a guy that's going to have a specialty on the team and that would be a solidified role for him and he can grow and continue and maybe become an outside corner later but there's guys a lot of guys in the league that just specialize at the slot position if Matt comes in and specializes at the slot position that'll be a big up for him he's not a guy that could play in the slot but he's a guy that could dominate in the slot because to be in the slot you have to be you know shorter smaller guy than a guy that's going to play on the outside because you have to be able to defend on those shifty short routes you have to be able to line up against those slot receivers and slot receivers are typically your smaller guys that are like shifty they're like the guys you know that's going to break your ankles and do all those little trick plays so you have to be tricky too at the slot corner position and you have to be nimble and fast and quick and all the things we know that mac is also another big plus for Mac is that the Denver Broncos head coach Vic Fangio is a defensive minded coach now a lot of head coaches could either be offensive minded or defensive minded very rarely do you have both so their head coach Fangio coming from a defensive background he's going to put more emphasis on the defense yes and he's a guy that likes to use four corners in his dime packages and a dime package is when you have six um, defensive backs on the field at one time. That's a combination of safeties and corners. And some teams will use three corners and three safeties. Some people will use two corners and four safeties in their dime packages. But Vic is a guy that likes to use four corners and two safeties. So if he's using such heavy cornerback play, he's going to have to have some more corners on the roster. And especially a guy that can specialize in the slot like Matt McCain can. There are a few other guys that will be coming into training camp trying to fight for those three remaining spots in the Broncos cornerback room as well. But all of those guys are unproven. And I think Mac has a great chance of beating those guys out, especially since he's going to be coming from an outside corner role. And the outside corner role is usually your tougher role. He's going to be coming from an outside corner role, shifting into the slot. So he will already be having those outside corner instincts, but bringing that speed and that shiftiness to the slot. Like I said, um, the Broncos are a team that has retained 16... The Broncos have kept an undrafted free agent on their roster in 16 out of the last 17 seasons. And like I said, the money has been speaking so far in Max's favor. And I can see it definitely continue to speak as we head into training camp. But you guys know we're going to be providing you guys with all the updates in training camp and beyond. So make sure you stay tuned in and tapped in to the HBCU NFL report and let us know what you guys think. What do you think Max outlook is with the Broncos and what are you excited about for some of your other HBCU rookies headed into training camp? Let us know. Let me know down below. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe as well. Keep rocking with us. Also, turn on your notification bells on because you know the videos are going to keep coming. You don't want to miss a single video. So make sure you turn on your notification bells. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!